Hello, welcome to the Astana Music Artist Spotlight. I'm your host, Jay Manez. Today's guest is very special to the Astana family. For over four decades, she's been, well, let's say the secret weapon to the entertainment industry, law enforcement, world leaders, and major financial institutions. She's the world-renowned psychic who we've seen on David Letterman, Entertainment, and ETV, and featured in Vogue, Redbook, and Glamour magazines. Her individual client list reads like a who's who in music, film, and TV. Talent like George Brown of Cole and the Gang, Vanessa Williams, Goldie Hawn, and many more you know who just can't be named. And now we're going to get a glimpse into exactly what she does that makes her so effective and in demand, and how you can tap into your own psychic abilities. So let's go there now. Enjoy. Thank you, Maria, for joining us. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, too. Because you're a lot of fun and down to earth. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So I don't have to. I just couldn't be me. All right. You're self-described as an intuitive consultant. And you're a psychic with spiritual healing abilities. Do you believe everything you read? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. That's why we're, I'm going to ask you about it. Okay. I'm not familiar at all with that field. Can you describe that for me and tell okay. me how you started to develop these abilities? Well, I am a practicing, practicing psychic since 1974. And I had gone in 1971, I believe, 71. I had gone to a beautiful, wonderful lady here in the city in Venice and who was a psychic and I was studying psychology at the time and waitressing with kids. And, um, but I wanted to know if the boyfriend was going to call. So one of my co-workers said, you know, the psychic. And I said, well, what, $35? My God. But I'll do it to go and see if, you know, uh, he was going to call. Well, she said, well, Maria, you know, I see this, um, uh, this cake without frosting. I said, what does that mean? He says, well, it's a psychic symbol. It means that it doesn't jive. You know, you and this guy say, oh, my God, you know. Uh, but she told me other amazing things that my mother, who was deceased, was offering this. She told me things that uh, they were right on, like names and so forth. So, uh, and then at the end, she says, I know you're not very happy about this, but she says, you're very psychic. I said, ha ha, but is it going to call? That was my question. So she says, you know, come in two weeks and I will... Um, it will exchange a psychic reading. I started laughing. I said, what do you mean, exchange? She said, you read me, I read you. I said, yeah, right, you know. Uh, but I wanted to know if he was going to call. And uh, so it was a deal. And I discovered that I, what I thought natural, which it is, by the way, every single person on earth is psychic. In Greek, the word psyche means uh, soul. So you have, if you have a psyche, you're psychic. It's just that some people are more than others. It's like the voice. If someone sings, um, well, people who sing rather, some of them are on stage, but some in the shower, but we cannot sing. Mm. So the same thing with the psychic ability. So the idea is to become aware of it, and that's where I come in. I raise awareness, as she did with me, and she gave, did psychometry, which in Greek means picking up vibrations from an object. She gave me something to hold and said, well, I see so-and-so, this um, a man that I described. I said, but I'm making it up. She says, it's fine. I'm making it up. I said, well, let's make him Irish and let's make him a Gemini. And I think more trouble, excitement. I said, she said to me, make it up. I said, I think he's got a, a Gemini sibling also. And in that case, let's make the sibling has an issue, has an undeveloped organ in their body. And the, the, I said, F is in Frank or something like that. And then I said, no, F is in Floyd, because Floyd was such a weird name to me. And so he went on for an eternity, four minutes. And uh, finally, I wasn't making it up anymore. And I'm sharing this so people can relate to their own abilities that maybe they have ignored. Um, and then when I was making up a story, 
I was not making a story anymore. A real fast story was going fast. I found myself in a large room that I knew it was an air on or a conversion from a garage to room added on to a house, low ceiling. And it was like I had issues focusing my attention in that room uh, as if there was something wrong with my eyes. And uh, very real. And then I saw a cane leaning against the wall, a white cane. And I knew that it was, uh, I kept going, I knew there was a young woman with a J initial, 24 years old, and she was in denial about, she had been just pronounced legally blind, and she was in denial. And she, because she, a legally blind person can kind of hazily sense, kind of outline things. And I said that a, um, a little a pet would be instrumental for her to pick up the cane. And that was it. Then all of a sudden I came back. I don't know, to where I was making fun earlier, you know, it was like, and all of a sudden I was someplace that I did not recognize. It was weird. And uh, so the woman confirmed there was someone named Floyd, uh, Irish, red hair and all, that was interested in her and they were doing all kinds of things together work-wise. And, um, and some more juicy things uh, because neither, neither one of them was available. So, um, and then her daughter-in-law, Judith with the J had just been declared legally blind and that's why they had built a room for, for them. So um, that is how I became aware. Mm. And the uh, first television show I did, I said, well, they said, but Maria, you're so psychic. I said, well, isn't everybody? I did not know the difference, really. So, um, but I wouldn't, she wanted to say, Maria, you have to work, you have to share this talent. I said, oh, please spare me. And I, I wouldn't. And it took a long time for me. Um, I was, I had a salon of beauty at the time. While, like I said, I was in college and I uh, wanted to be a psychologist and dealing with three hours of sleep for about six and a half years. And so as I would, once I knew what I could do, and she had meditation classes, and I went to, uh, the person who discovered me, I went to her meditation classes, and once uh, you know, I could do, like I would touch the people doing the makeup or something, and I would say, oh, what about Robert? She says, oh, this is that, 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 that. Says, but I never told you about Robert. So, and then people from the class that I was going to, to two years later, they, because we practice in a class, and they just kept coming and said, you know, the, the, the lady who had discovered me, says, she said, if we don't pay you, what you tell us is not going to come to pass. I said, okay, so in a month's time, I sold um, in uh, the, my place of business. And that was March of 74. Wow. I know I told you a long story. You can take whatever it is that you you want from it. But they, so I raise awareness because people are psychic. A lot of them are afraid. And once you get in tune with that ability within you, because I do, you have it, I do not make anyone psychic. I point out to them that they are when I do my workshops. And you can use it for everyday living. And trust me, you're going to get more mileage out of life that way. And we all use it. Think of the times that we say, my hunch tells me, or my gut tells me. What, what, what is this gut? Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's your psychic ability. People are so afraid to use um, the word psychic, say intuitive and so forth. Well, it's the same thing. You use your intuition psychically. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, I would describe that as intuition. And well... And it's, so and it's come up many times. Is, is there a difference or are they Absolutely exactly the not. same? Intuition comes from where? It comes, you know, from your soul. Every single person on earth is psychic. I see. Okay? I see. And I encourage everyone to start tuning in and think of uh, how many times uh, people would say, um, I knew it. 
Well, how did you know it? How many times in your life have you said, I knew it? Many. Okay. How did you know it? I would call that intuition. That's right, but you didn't trust it. That is why the exclamation once it materializes, say, oh, I knew it. But the moment you sensed it, you did not know it. You didn't say, oh, my God, I better, you know, think of this, file this, whatever, because that's what's going to happen. But if you get psychic training, you will learn immediately to discern what it is that is intuitive and what it is that comes from your thoughts. Uh, that was my next question. How do we tell the you're difference? You're psychic, so you're interested. <laughs> practice. Training or practice. You can be, I can train you in three hours. Yeah, so tell me about that. You do a workshop ar around that. That's right. Psychic development for everyday living. Tell me more. People come in. I lead them. I explain to them how uh, it works, uh, what I just shared with you, how we're all psychic and so forth. And... Um, talk a lot about the power of the subconscious mind, which, by the way, there's an amazing book, my Bible, by Dr. Joseph Mar Murphy, that's called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, which I urge everyone to get a, a used copy old, if possible. And uh, Is it out of print? And, no, I just, but it's been a little tweaked as if it's been, yeah, I get an old one. And you read that, you read us all. You know what I mean? You read the part of your subconscious mind, you would say, Maria, you were right, <laughs> you know? And so I talk a lot to people in my workshops as to how they create their own reality, because we do. We, we, we create our own reality through word, action, thought, because the subconscious does not know right from wrong, nor does it have, nor does it have a sense of humor. When you say, oh my God, I can't stand this, after a while you're gonna have issues it takes 22 days to develop a, a pattern in your mind. And so then you're going to have issues with your feet and or your knees because you ask for it. Every word, every thought are prayers. I do believe that we create our own reality. But what do you mean by it doesn't have a sense of humor? Your subconscious does not.